Yo, what's up guys, Nanjiro here, and today's video is going to be a how to build dragon. Alright, so, you can you can build dragon a bunch of different ways. For this video, we're going we're gonna to be talking about mainly ram dragon and storm dragon, however, I might do a video on, on aggro dragon if this video gets enough likes. Alright, so for ramp dragon, you have the, you obviously want to go ahead and like try to ramp. In the, in the early to mid game and then go ahead and play and play a load um, and just play a bunch of like big stuff in the, in the later stages of the game where your opponent can't deal with it you typically get two to three ramps early game and then maybe four if you get a nut draw and you get the the fabled oracle on two plus maybe isle on three forever on four civil on five etc however that's I don't know. I don't want to say it's super common, especially not for my list because my list currently doesn't have IL in it. However, it's still something that happens from time to time, and usually when those games happen, it's very, very difficult for you to lose. Alright, so we're just gonna go ahead and go. Deck new. Alright, so. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys both ways that you would build the deck. Now, for me personally, there's a lot, there's a lot of like aggro stuff on, on the ladder right now, and you really want to like try to find times to be able to ramp. And you also need to have enough early game removal to go ahead and get and get to those later stages of the game, because generally, once you get to ten mana, if you're not if you're not like if you're not like half dead, you know, at like six HP or something like that, then it's gonna be it's gonna be hard for you to it's gonna be hard, very very hard for you to lose, provided you go ahead and you like you play your turns correctly. So. To that and we're gonna get into some three blazing breath. Um, typically, some people only do one. Right now, I'm doing three, just because aggro is so prevalent right now. Just because you know, I started the meta and whatnot. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add in three. Mm. For now, for now, we're gonna do two lyrial. Lyrial is nice because lyrial is a two drop play that you can make. It um, it. It, 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 it lets you like trade into it lets you like trade into goblins and whatnot you know get a nice value trade there sure you can you can get denied by Grimnir however if you're going first you can you can just you know make a one for one trade with their two drop and that's nice or you can discourage them from playing a one drop and that's also nice as well and it's just you know it, it, it gives you a lot of things to do now why you would play Lyrial over say Eunuch is because Lyrial has better scaling in the sense that I don't think since I've been playing I don't think I've ever seen a Eunuch ever heal for two or if it or if it has healed for two I don't think I've ever seen a heal for more than two just because as Dragon your board will almost never stick just because that's just that's just the nature of the class because you don't you don't actually play it play enough like follow-up creatures to actually warrant to actually warrant your opponent trying to like trade with you and so you should be trying to get face for the most part. Three Oracle. Oracle is pretty much well standard to ramp dragon just because it's a nice turn to play. Right now it's kind of scary however I think you I think you still well I mean I don't think I don't I really don't think that there's ever a world in which you don't play three. Uh, for now, we're gonna do two Dragon Summoner. Dragon Summoner is really nice. Dragon Summoner is fanfare. Put a random Dragon Craft follower in, into your hand. Traditionally, for the most part, no matter what Ramp Dragon list you use, at least right now, you generally only have Sybil, Ouroboros, and Dragoon Scyther, as well as Dragon Summoner as your targets. So, and because but because you but because you generally only play two Scyther and two Oro, but you play three Sybil, that gives you a let's see two three. That gives you like almost a one in three to, to, to almost fifty percent chance to get a civil, and that's pretty crazy to me. So we'll go ahead and and, and throw that in there. It's it's basically the, a maid leader for Dragoncraft. All right, so we'll go ahead and throw in three three breath at uh, three breath of salamander. Breath of salamander is really really nice. On two, you can use a spot removal. On six, you can go ahead and, and use it to, to try to clear bigger boards. It is a lot harder to do that now that. 
now that there are certain decks that can go ahead and dodge the uh, the two HP threshold, such as decks that play Alice Alice in Wonderland, because you because you can get because like if they're at two HP already, which they usually are, then they just then they just go ahead and buff up to three, and that's naturally just you know out of range. Three Grimnir. With Dragon, you get to 10 faster than most decks on average, and generally, Grimnir is pretty strong, especially when you can play it on turn, well, on sometimes even turn 5. I'm not going to play Ayala just because Ayala is pretty low tempo, and in this Dragon, there are other things you, that you want to be able to play. I also don't want to dilute my Dragon, my, yeah, my Dragon Summoner pulls, so, so I'm not going to play that. I am going to I am going to throw in 2 Sybil. Or not, not too simple, too Scyther. Scyther is good because Scyther is really, really excellent spot removal. One thing for Dragoncraft is that, like, they really have, like, really shitty single target removal. The the other options for removal they had were... Were... One second, let me, let me, just, scroll, let me just scroll to it because I, I actually, actually know where it is in, in the mana cost pool. So I'm just going to scroll to it. It's Serpent Wrath, which is 4 mana, deals 6 damage to an enemy. Which usually does kill, but that usually also takes up mystery turn because Dragoncraft doesn't really have like good plays with six mana. And then there was Lightning Blast. Lightning Blast is good, however, you can't really play it because it doesn't really do anything versus, versus the decks that you would like want to play it versus. Especially, especially not since not since it's been nerfed. Um, the next thing for it right now is three Goblin Breaker Tina. I don't think you can play Dragon without playing Goblin Breaker Tina, just because she she helps you she helps you. Uh, well, I guess this makes sense to every deck, but like but she helps you fight fight off the neutral so so damn well, and it's really nice being able to kill, uh, being able to be able to, to, to freely kill an evolved Alice as well as another target with the Fina. And it just it just helps you stay alive for a little bit longer because for the most part, generally, if you can make it to five and you ramp once a Sybil, then you're generally going to be in a really really great spot. Just because the Sybil with an Evo is is a five mana six seven heal for three and then pseudo heal for seven because they're going to have to because they're, because they're going to they're going to have to throw in at least seven seven damage in, into it. Or they're gonna have to like give you an Evo and like and maybe and maybe like make some like awkward plays in order to deal with it. And when they don't deal with it, and then you and then you get to like full clear or something like that, she heals you again. That that's usually just game. I'm not gonna throw in Rahab because again, I don't I don't want to dilute my pools. Additionally, I don't think Rahab is that good now just because the only time I, where I feel he's like okay is if you ramped once and you and you and you have to like and you have to like play them on like five mana or, or something like that i don't even think that's like that great the ward the ward would be cool however i don't like that either just because it's too slow and doesn't really and doesn't really like do that much three sybil again I, i've already talked about this numerous times the sybil's pretty clutch it lets you. It just allows you to to to, uh, to transition nicely into, into the into the later stages of the game. There is some there is some merit to, to playing Raft Drake, and we'll go and we'll go ahead and like consider it. So, so I'll go ahead, so I'll go ahead and like toss him one for now, just so that way I don't forget. And if we decide to play it, well then we'll go ahead and come back to it. Three forever. Because you're not playing Ayala, you want to try to have as much, as much ramp as possible. Ad additionally, the fervor, because you can hit ten so nicely, you can sometimes get into really nice parts where you can where you can get to fervor and then maybe like play spot removal as well. But it's really really nice for the for the games where you get to go Oracle something on three, or sorry, Oracle something we have four mana. And, prefer and preferably something decent that like won't die on the board. So, for example, like Lyrio or something like that, and, and maybe a piece of spot removal into fervor on four, or into fer into fervor when we have five mana, and then like placeable after that. It's it just it's just really just so strong. All right, and at this point, 
this is where you this is where you have to start making some some actual decisions as dragon. Are you are you are, yeah? Are you storm dragon? If so, what exactly what exactly are, do you plan to be storming with? And and additionally, what how exactly do you want to win with your storm damage? In the sense that, are you going to be Erd Forte? You can't do Erd Forte in this list just because I don't have Ayla. However. If you did want to play Earth Forte, you could cut Dragon Summoner for that, possibly, or you could, or you could just uh, put those in as well. However, I really like that Dragon Summoner always gives me something that's like playable right now. So, um, or are you Dread or yeah, or are you Dread OTK? And Dread OTK is using Dread Sea Queen, which is ten mana. Change the change the cost of a neutral card, excluding Queen of the Dread Sea, and a non-neutral card in your hand to zero, and then discard all of the cards in your hand. Now, the way this works is that you is that you ideally you want to you want to target both Z uh, Genesis Dragon and Zeus, and then you go ahead and you play both of those, and then you go ahead and you Evo the Genesis or Evo the Zeus, and you go ahead and hit for 14, 12 to fourteen damage from three cards and again you also get a giant ward out of this and all and all and all of your cards all have high hp total so it's it's, it's, it's really difficult for for certain mid-range decks to, to, to deal with that especially if you if you got to 10 safely enough just because like the only things that answer that board are exactly femis or exactly tribune or sorry not, not tribunal exactly femis or exactly bahamut it, 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 it's, it's just hard it's just too hard to answer it otherwise or the, the, other, the other consideration is, are you going to be Saha Quill? If you're going to be Saha Quill, that's fine, but you need to remember that, that the Saha Quill package will cost you at least five slots in your deck. It will be three of the Saha Quill, and either and either two Israfil, double double Lucifer, or two Israfil, one Lucifer. At the moment, I'm not playing the Saha Quill list just because, I mean, it's playable, uh, however, I just I'm not I'm not playing at the moment just because I don't want to accidentally queue into to queue into Aegis Haven and then die because because the Saha Quill list isn't as isn't as good versus that deck. However, the Saha Quill list does shine versus mid range decks in the sense that you can go ahead and and just kind of bully them out because you have like additional evos. You want to try to think of Saha Quill as basically being a luminous mage in the sense that it, it basically it gives you like a free evo from out of nowhere and then your opponent and your opponent usually it usually it usually is not expecting this and then they just kind of get wrecked for, by, uh, for it and it's, it's pretty funny all right um and here for complex complex has seen a rise in play just because you really, really, really need to have AOE for for some for some of Swordcraft's boards now, just be just because they can dodge Breath of the Salamander. However, they they can't currently dodge Conflagration, so so that really helps for that. So so again, we're, we're gonna go ahead and toss in one of that, and we're just gonna hold on to it, and then we're gonna decide if we wanna if we wanna keep playing with it. The other part of Storm is tilting at windmills. Tilting at windmills is whenever you play a neutral follower, give it Storm and then destroy it at the end of your turn. And for that, there's actually an OTK with it. Again, this involves Dread Sea Queen, and you'll be going tilting into, into Dread Sea Queen, targeting Lucifer. It doesn't matter what else you target, but it, you, you, the, the only thing you care about is just targeting, is just targeting the Lucifer. And then you go ahead and they both command the play. They both gain Storm. You, you Evo the Lucifer. The Lucifer is now gonna be dealing nine damage, the, and then the Ursula is going to, or sorry, not the Ursula, the, uh, the Dread Sea Queen is going to be doing 7, and then during the end of that turn, the Lucifer is effect will proc before it dies, and, the, your, and your opponent will take an additional 4 for a total of 20 damage. And that's pretty cool, however, the tilting is, is kind of scary to find time to play, just because it's 7 mana do nothing, and, and unlike stuff like, say, like, say, Polyroar, your, your 7 mana do nothing isn't, like, it, it, it can be blocked by wards easily, whereas like poly, whereas like poly where is a uh, is an overtime. You just like you just accrue additional value. All right, two robbers. You only really need two robbers, especially especially because in this list, because of Dragon Summoner, which again is really is really nice. You can go ahead and fetch out your robbers if if need be. A robbers is is a really really good card as well. 
He allows you to just like... He allows you to... He allows you. He allows you to, uh, to just like beat certain decks that kind of like that kind of like run out of steam after you go ahead and you clear their first board, just because if they aren't close to killing you, then then when their robbers comes down, they have to worry about clearing it, and then so like each turn you get you get to like ignore you get to like heal for seven sort of, sort of because you well a, 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 a little bit more than seven actually because you'll go ahead and you'll snipe something for three most likely kill it. Then they'll have to go ahead and throw in at least four damage into your robbers to into your uh, into your your robbers to clear it. And then when a robber dies, you'll heal for three more. So, so in total, it, it, in the event that he does get cleared and you killed something, you're, he, you're healing for at least ten, which is which is pretty nice. And it's just a great card overall. All right. Uh, so if you are so if you are just like regular ramp, then then you're gonna go ahead and toss in Olivia. The reason why you toss in Olivia because is because right now. You do run out of evos a lot, and and there are certain cards in Dragoncraft that you can't that you can't just freely develop unless you have unless you have an e unless you have an evo point later in the game. It's not too difficult to find times to to go ahead and play the Olivia. It just it, it just really just comes down to being able to retain evos as much as possible, and, and just establish board control when you're starting to fall behind. Because right now, the decks that aren't spawn blood tend to go pretty wide overall and I, and again th they tend to dodge aoe pretty nicely so so the olivia helps out with that just so this way you can play israfil and not get your face smashed in when you do it and speaking of which israfil is the next card so for israfil israfil is nine mana eight eight restore four restore four defense to your leader whenever the smaller attacks deal two damage to all enemies now this is nice because it's a heal it's a giant body it gets some chip damage and and it's annoying it for the for the fact that like the first turn when it comes out you're going to be dealing two as well as well as clearing off something on the board so you can kind of treat it as as a, as a very very large breath of the salamander for nine mana and then the next turn if it stays on the board it's threatening 12 damage so so one card will be doing 14 damage across two turns and that's in, that's pretty insane when you think about it so we're gonna so we're gonna go ahead and toss in two again this is gonna be for just, I guess, purely ramp dragon, so. And then, the, and then the next thing to consider is, well, the, the next thing immediately is just three Bahamut. You need Bahamut. Bahamut, Bahamut is basically your next trump card for a lot of boards. However, it doesn't, it, it won't do anything for, versus Haven, and you, you need to be cognizant of that fact. However, versus everything else, Bahamut, Bahamut works out nicely, just because, and it, it just because it clearly, it just because it just clean wipes the board, and then it puts your opponent into tricky situations because they have to clear it because if they don't clear the Bahamut, and you play Grimnir, they're taking 17 damage, and if they've taken any damage but prior to that, well, they're just dead. All right, and all right, so now we're down to our last three to five, three to five slots. Here's the part where you decide, okay, well, do I want any storm at all? The answer generally is going to be yes, just because there are some decks that where you where you need to have out of hand damage, just because if you don't, they can punish you by, by just like clearing and removing everything you have. Like for example, right now, one of the current Haven decks is running Iron Maidens in order to, in order to count in order to counter spawn of the Abyss. And and you really need, you really just need the out of hand damage just so that way you're, you're still like you're still being able to do something. So so here you go ahead and choose between Zeus and Genesis. For me, for this list, I'm going to go ahead and pick Zeus just because this list wants to be defensive overall. I'm only going to toss him one for now while I'm still deciding what else I want to play. And then and then now we're down to two slots. So here we can go back to back to the raft rake versus versus Conflag situation. Conflag is a creature, and generally creatures are better than spells. However, for one mana less, Conflag does four, does four damage, and four damage is, is usually enough to clear the board. So we're, pro so we're probably gonna go ahead and, and cut the Raft Jake for Conflags. Hmm, I don't, I don't know if I want to play three yet, but, but, but we can go ahead and keep deciding on that one. Hmm. 
Mm. Okay. I think, I think I'm actually going to play two. And here's why. <coughs> this deck in particular has a lot of ways to deal with... To deal with, to deal with like early game boards for the most part. You have Breath of Salamander, you have six Blazing Breaths, then you have the, the Tulerial, and then you just have Scyther and Fina as well. That's a lot of early game to, to just kind of move the board. Generally, most times, versus most decks, especially right now, when people are playing very, very aggressively, if you can full clear their board like once or twice, that's usually enough to win. And with the conflagration, because we have two of them, that's an, that's enough to guarantee that we that, that we'll see at least one copy in most games. And one copy again is usually enough, just because you you probably won't need to play all three in the, all three in the same game. All right. So now we're down to two to two slots. This is the part where I go ahead and and you go ahead and you try to think about okay, well, what does my deck beat so far? What doesn't it beat? And right now, the answer would be you beat mid-range decks and you beat aggro, but you kind of lose to to control, such as Haven, or you lose to to, to Nep Shadow, or well, to Nep Shadow slash Mordecai. So for that reason, we're gonna go ahead and toss in a Poly Roar. And Poly Roar is good because it's nine mana at the start of your turn. Summon a Wind Blast Dragon. Wind Blast Dragon is a six. It's a six play point five five storm, and then when evolved, it's seven seven. And that's nice because you could because like once it gets into play, you put your opponent on a timer. They suddenly ha they suddenly have to, have to worry about taking a guaranteed five damage per turn if they try to flood out to try to pressure you. And a Grimner comes down, well, then you kind of lose the game because they take four damage, and then five more. And because we're playing the poly, I want to I want to have a way, I want to have either a way to search it, which is which gives me additional thinning. Oop, not nerd. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss in a Uriel. Uriel is kind of good on four. She's uh, because four four mana for dragon is kind of a dead turn because you don't because like look what I have on four. I only have Uriel and I have Goblin and I have Goblin Breaker Tina. So so you want to have something nice on four so so you can get like some of those games where you get to go Oracle into Uriel. It's a fervor, it's a sibyl, and then suddenly you can you can now throw down your polyphonic roar. And uh, uh, well, specifically, polyphonic roar isn't going to be for every matchup, and you shouldn't and you shouldn't think of it as uh, as uh, as like a primary win con because it's not. Generally, your primary your generally your primary win con in most games is going to be to try to is going to be to try to get to ten, try to find a robbers, and then just like start start making plays to the board in accordance to what you have to do. Like so, for example, versus mid range, you're gonna want to try to get down Bahamut versus or versus aggro slash mid range. You want you're gonna want to try to get down Bahamut versus control. You're gonna you're gonna maybe uh, want to try to get down Polyphonic Roar or maybe Oro, and then just like decide what you need to do during each game. But yeah, but yeah. So so the, so let's so go ahead and take a look at the list all together. And this is our finished product. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Go ahead and leave a like if you did, and go ahead and let me know what deck you would like to see me build next from scratch. And uh, and yeah.